refreshing my mind about the things that you talk about. I found an old conference talk that you uh, on YouTube that you recorded uh, some years ago, which we'll put a link in the description, cool. where you were talking exactly on that topic. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to quote you at you. So every time you encounter a testability problem, there's an underlying design problem. Could you just explain that idea a little bit? More? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's an in, it's a weird thing. I just if, if you don't mind me like you know backing into it a little bit from where no, no. It, from at least in in my recognition of it, um, in the very early days of like people trying to apply unit testing and um, and systems. Um, one of the things that came up all the time is like, oh, I've got a class. I want to write a test for a method on the class. But guess what? The method is private. What do I do? Right. And it's kind of weird with that because an entire segment of the industry went on creating special add-ins to unit testing frameworks to go and say, OK, let's bypass the protection and let's do this, this and this. And, you know, it's kind of like, and you know, I mean, there were a lot of people who saw no problem with that. And to me, that just smelled funny, right? And yeah. then talking to people in the nascent XP community and stuff like that, I kind of like, you know, people say, well, you know, if you have a private method you want to test, then you're, um, you know, chances are it's like maybe that's part of an abstraction that's begging to be pulled out of yeah. the bigger thing you have and you can break it down into smaller pieces. So the thing that was, one thing to get about me is I basically am driven completely by curiosity, right? So I couldn't figure out why that was necessarily true or why it worked so often. And then I started thinking about it an awful lot and started making a list of all the different things that are like that. Like you have a pain when you're testing something and it turns out there's a design problem. And then if you fix the design problem, testability becomes easy. Yeah. And um, you know, there's all sorts of things like that. So there's the thing of you know private methods. Um, gosh, what are some of the other things too? Like you make a change make a change you have to go and change 15 tests in order to go and actually sort of change you know the uh the thing that you want to go and deal with that can be a design problem as well um yeah there's all these little things that are like that and what i finally arrived at was seeing a conference paper from I forget what the conference was it was a spin-off of the Uxla conference and someone was making the case they mentioned a little bit earlier that um essentially good design is really an artifact of the way our minds work in a way mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so he was going and making this case and going through and I said, aha, I get it. You know, essentially what it comes down to is that if you are, um, when you are trying to write tests for something, you're trying to write a program to understand the program. I mean, that's one way of framing what we do. Yeah. And if it's hard to write a program to understand the program, it's probably hard to understand the program, right? Yeah. So it's, it's that kind of thing of going and recognizing that. I mean, another one to go and add in here as well is like sometimes you're using a framework and it's hard to write code that hard to test code that uses the framework because yeah. you can't mock things out very easily. It's like, well, design problem is like, you know, not, not very good separation of concerns. You should minimize the connection between the framework and the thing that you have as domain code and stuff like that. And so in the talk, I give a whole list of maybe I think 10 or so, you know, different places where this seems to apply and, uh, Use it to drive that home. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it was, it, it was, it was, it was a great talk and, I, I, I confess I didn't learn anything from it because it so strongly reinforced my prejudices and my own yeah, prejudices. Yeah, no, it's, it's so, so, but it was a fantastic talk and I liked the way that you broke broke down the, the, the individual cases. But I, I, I think that idea of um, <clears throat> of kind of, you know, writing a program to evaluate the program that you're writing <laughs> is, is 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 an interesting one because because it makes us one of the things that i love about test driven development quite so much mm -hmm. is that it puts me in the posi position of a consumer of my own code because yeah. i'm going to write the test i'm going to be consuming my code and then I'm going to say this mm -hmm. is horrible to use so i'm going to change it so it's it's mm -hmm. nice to use to make it easy for me to write the test and there's yeah. a pressure on me to you know I'd be rather foolish if I'm not going to expend some effort to make it easy for me to write my own tests and therefore yeah, I, easier to use my own code. Totally. And I think when you're writing new code and doing TDD, that's a, a great thing with that to go and sort of like, you know, see that connection. One of the things I, so I, I quite often deal with people that have large existing code bases and trying to get tests in place, you know, for them. Right. And the thing about this, that's kind of funny is that people can easily walk away with the perception that testing is just hard because yeah. they're trying to test code that was never designed to be tested. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like I said, no, you know, once you sort of like see that the pain you're experiencing when you're testing um, has a real root to it, then basically it's almost like having, 
you know, your tests are almost like a mentor in a way. It's kind of like yeah. going and, and telling you, teaching you about good design, just in the process of encountering pain and thinking about what you could have done alternatively when you were designing the system or something else. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. I, 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 again, I, I think I say the same thing, but in different different words. One of mm -hmm. the ways that I talk about this is that it just gives us almost instant feedback on the quality of our design. Yeah. And, and and I've that's probably the thing that I value most in test driven development more more than almost anything else is that I don't really if if you're a talented software designer and an experienced software developer you've probably got some thoughts and ideas and opinions on on on, on what you know how to make a good design but I don't mm -hmm. think anything else gives you quite the same level of fast instant visceral feedback that writing a test and finding it hard to write your test. Yeah, you know, and it, it, it's weird because I, you know, I've tried to dig back and figure out, well, hey, where did all this stuff come from? And of course, like, you know, Ken Beck and Ward Cunningham and yeah. very, very early pioneers of XP and stuff like that. And I don't recall whether one of them said this or I just kind of like said, oh, put two and two together. But, you know, their early work was like in a in small talk, right? And essentially, yes. it, it's not quite a REPL, but you have something called the transcript window and you can just try things out, right? Yeah. And I thought, you know, in a way, this thing of going in, doing unit testing is a way of going in sort of like building a REPL for what are quite often statically typed languages. And you're able to try things out in this test harness. Yeah. And then of course, the great thing is that we have durability. It's kind of like those things can live forever too. Um, but yeah, the ability to play a bit in a very, in a way where it's easy to fail and not hurt things is just like a great affordance that testing gives us too, you know? Yeah. So, so, so I, I, I think that both of us would probably think of ourselves as, as um, kind of devoted TDD practitioners. You know, we're, we're we're both pretty committed to that being the best way of doing doing things, and therefore, presumably, without me putting words in your mouth, you know, you like I wish that it was more widely adopted. Um, is this one yeah. of the barriers? Is this one of the barriers? Do you think that, that the fact that this is principally so? I, I think the implication of what we're saying is that this is this is principally about the quality of design. This is probably you know good designers um, maybe uh, find yeah. testing easier, uh, and poorer designers find it harder. Maybe 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 that's the barrier to entry because learning design good design is difficult. This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room with Dave Farley, a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favorite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring the, you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.